you know, it's funny because we heard at least one great comment yesterday. It's like, I don't have time to blog. I have a real job. And I appreciate that. It turns out this is my real job. And um, I blog and I tweet and we use Facebook quite a bit. And we're going to come today and kind of talk about social media and, and what the impact it's having on um, the marketing game. And certainly a lot of people in this room, as well as the service providers and what they provide and, and what's happening out there right now. And this stuff is changing and it's changing quickly. A year and a half ago, we could not have sold a, uh, a social media campaign or program for the life of us. Right now, it's all we get asked about. It's all we talk about. Now, I'm not saying that this absolutely replaces everything. Certainly not. We're going to talk about that. But I do want to talk a little bit about social media in the context of a little bit of historical perspective, what's going on right now, and what the, the future or the near future is going to bring to us. And hopefully, I'll, I'll, I'll provide some information, and that'll be useful to you. Now, that's what I'm going to give to you. I want two things in return, if you don't mind. Number one, I heard a lot of people say, Jeff, we can't wait for your presentation. It sounds great. All right. So assume it's a good presentation. Assume you're going to have fun and then, you know, maybe be a self-fulfilling prophecy. The second thing is my humor tends to be kind of lowbrow. If you think you should laugh, laugh. Even at the hint, just laugh, okay? And we'll kind of go through this as quickly as we can. So this is the first thing I want to point out. Um, we heard a little bit yesterday about how the game is changing. And on the same vein, we're hearing about how social media just simply is a more natural extension of the way we all should be doing marketing. And this is what we at Trek have been saying for a number of years now. And that is, if you think about the 20th century, really what we're talking about is a bubble in time. That before the, the invention of mass media machinery, in other words, high-speed printing presses and radio and television, we never had mass media. We had personalized, one-to-one, -one relevant communications. That's what constituted marketing. And then the 20th century invented these techniques. Mass marketing became the way everybody um, did everything. And everybody from the ad agencies to the, the large uh, corporate people adopted those techniques and designed systems and processes to actually take advantage of it. But what's happening now is that the digital revolution, and especially as applied towards communications, is changing the game back again towards the ability to have personalized conversations. And now I really mean conversations, not just personalized outbound, but true one-to-one -one conversations via social media. Just as an example, digital in general, this is a quick graph um, of some very, very recent data showing the current and projected growth of digital buys in general. And I just want to demonstrate what, th what this means is this isn't ad spends going up. This is digital spends going up. Everything else is declining. And I'm not here to say that mass marketing is dead, although I have been known to say that in the past. It's, it's finding a new level. It's readjusting in the mix. And it's declining. And whenever you're declining and you're not growing, a lot of people consider that dying. Um, and really interesting right now what's happening is that, as you probably heard even uh, the last couple of days, TV actually has stabilized, it looks like. It's, it seems to have found its low point to a certain degree. And we're seeing TV ad spends actually become more predictable instead of just declining for you know the better part of 20, 30 years. But newspapers, magazines, other types of um, media things like radio, they're all still in, in steep decline. So what I want to do is I want to think about the past. And I'm going to go way, way back to 2008. And when I say we're going to talk about the past, I'm talking 2008. When I talk about the current, I'm talking 2009. When I talk about the future, I'm talking 2010. But what happened last year? I think there's some range thing going on here. I'm going to come over here because of the range. Anyway, this is what happened. We had a presidential campaign with some re really remarkable changes in the way communication was done. Again, we heard a little bit about that yesterday. I'm just going to quickly go through this. This is a great quote from the New York Times talking about how different presidential campaigns over time had adopted new and emerging media and communication technology and had a dramatic impact um, on those elections. Certainly, the Obama campaign was one of them. And what I want to do is just kind of slide through real quickly to see what's different and what things happened during that election cycle that used social media. 
and I'll quickly walk through this. We had a little bit yesterday, so I won't dwell on it. Everybody understands this. But I do want to say is regardless of your political persuasion, this is a remarkable achievement, what the campaign was able to do. But it, from our point of view, we talked to a lot of our, our, our clients about a website being the centerpiece or being the place where everything kind of starts and ends when it comes to all sorts of different media. And certainly uh, their campaign was, was like that. And it had lots and lots of features. And we'll just kind of spin through here. But I want to stop here real quick and talk about email. We're just talking about email and how effective it is. The Obama campaign, in the period of time um, uh, they were up and running, collected over 13 million individual email addresses and sent over a billion messages. And one of the remarkable things about that was it's a huge number, but also the effectiveness. Because one of the reasons you use uh, media in general, and certainly email, is to solicit donations. And people will often say, well, you know, social media, that was great. Obama campaign did that. They spent $600 million. Yeah, they did. But where did they get the $600 million? And it turns out they had over 3 million individual uh, contributors on average spending $25 to the campaign. That is a remarkable achievement. That was no way that could have been done without social media, without web, without email. Real quickly, blogs. Um, RSS, which is a, a way to distribute this type of material. Um, certainly YouTube is huge. It's still huge because the president's um, weekly addresses go on YouTube. At the same time, they go across the air. That's different. Um, certainly things like Flickr for being able to store photographs. Uh, has it, did anybody ever take a look at their, uh, their presence on iTunes? E download an audio video podcast. A lot of people did. Uh, Delicious is a way that people can actually do bookmarking and sharing of information. And it's just huge numbers, what, uh, what, how much information ultimately landed in these locations. Dig is a huge one. Facebook. We talked, I think somebody mentioned yesterday how many millions of people the largest Facebook um, fan page had. This was last year. This was in November. It had over 3 million. And that was at a point in time when there was only about 100 million or so people on Facebook. And we just heard yesterday, if anybody's paying attention, they just crossed 300 million people use Facebook. We talked a little bit about LinkedIn. Here's an example of LinkedIn and Twitter. Now, Twitter is really interesting. I, I'm going to maybe talk a little more about this than others today just because it's, it's a phenomenal change. And what's interesting about it is that people generally don't get it. You know, we heard just a few minutes ago, I don't get Twitter. I did not get Twitter. So a year and a half ago, I'm looking at this thing going, I don't get it. And we'll talk about what's changed. But you don't get it until you start using it, and you start using it a lot. And then it dawns on you. Now I understand why it's important. But I want to talk about that. So how many people this time last year, last summer, even heard of Twitter? I'm, I'm, very, I'm very happy to see that, number one. And I think it probably has to do with the fact you're in media business. Usually, um, in a more br a general audience, we'll get you know, 15, 20%. But now you can't get away from Twitter. In fact, it's all over the place. Uh, it's, it's used for fun. It's used for entertainment. It's used, you know, to, to satirize. But it's very impactful on our, of our overall society. It's absolutely become a big part of who the American public is and the public discussion. But I want to ask the question, where are we right now? What, what impact do we have? Well. What you're finding is that there's a whole bunch of people have heard of it. How many people actually use Twitter? Okay. How many people um, use it effectively? OK, good. That's great. Well, some people, again, they just don't get Twitter. So we have this kind of situation. This was a, a, a very recent thing that happened about two months ago. Uh, there was a White House forum on health care. And what they did differently is that in order to generate the questions are going to be the topics, they utilize a Google App Engine um, application to actually go off and allow people to submit questions and then to discuss and vote. And during that period of time that it was up and running, uh, almost 100,000 people submitted over 100,000 questions and cast almost 1.8 million votes. And the idea is that the voting process brings the best ideas, if you will, to the top, basic crowdsourcing principle. And that's how they generated the questions to ask, um, uh, have the audience 